March the 24th, 2024. Guys, the solar activity is still increasing, and we've had several M flares since the X flare. We've also had two different models of the incoming CME disagreeing on the impact times. We're going to look at that. What you're looking at right now is live information from uh, the Discover satellite. Here is your solar density in the orange line, the uh, solar wind speed in kilometers per second in the purple line, and the temperature of both of the above in the green line. What we're seeing now, the CME has not arrived, but if you remember the images yesterday, after the CME occurred, you started seeing all of these energized particles coming at the camera that has arrived that's m much faster than the impact of the proton bur or the uh yes proton burst this is part of a photon event and energized particle event but what we're dealing with is a sudden rise here in solar wind speeds guys when you get up to 577 right in this area you're dealing with 1.6 million miles per hour this is your average around 3 320 right in here but now we're seeing the temperature of this incoming barrage increase and the solar wind speed jump. Now they're saying protons are raining down on Earth. An S2 class solar radiation storm is underway following the twin X flares of March 23rd. Remember, there were two sunspots that exploded at almost the same time. So now they've got these categorized both as X flares and both combined into the CME. This means energetic protons from the sun are running down on Earth. Primary effects include an Arctic blackout of shortwave radio signals and slightly elevated radiation levels for aircraft flying over the poles. A big CME is coming yesterday's X1 class solar flare Described below hurled a bright CME towards Earth. NASA and NOAA models agree that the storm cloud could reach our planet by the early hours of March 25th UT. That's the 24th where we're at. A direct hit could spark G3 class geomagnetic storms with mid-latitude auroras in the U.S. and A and Europe. Now there's a t change in the timing of all of this and we need to uh, look at it and just try to factor in somewhere in the middle of the two models maybe now let's take a look at the different models we'll call this model one and this is the one that's different from the one we were using yesterday notice today 24th at 1800 hours guys that is 2 p.m today on the east coast that's 11 a.m this morning on the west coast we got six hours or seven hours difference in this timing and remember there is a window of impact time that's plus or minus seven hours but this model is showing it coming in again to date 2 p.m on the east coast 11 a.m on the west coast it is right now almost 10 a.m on the east coast and uh, so we would be dealing with 7 p.m on the west coast so guys you're from 7 to 11 a.m you got about five hours according to this model from impact time so what does that mean with the with model two that we'll also look at which has not changed it was going to be 6 p.m on the west coast and the sun would be setting and so the pacific ocean would take the brunt of the coronal mass ejection right right now though it's going to be 11 a.m on the west coast 2 p.m on the east coast what does that mean the u.s is going to take the brunt of this impact if that model is right this is the other model showing the six o'clock impact this evening 6 p.m on the west coast and uh, the 9 p.m on the east coast so what either we got to choose one model or put an average in there between it so somewhere within the next few hours we're going to start seeing more and more of an impact you're already seeing the solar wind speed at 1.6 million miles per hour very strong and that more than likely could increase that is much stronger than what this model was showing at the peak look at this this was showing at 450 kilometers per second would be around the peak we're already at 577 so this is a little weaker than expected so we've got to kind of look at that 
this model was the original one that we were doing all the timing from so again guys this thing could come in within the next five hours up to the next let's say 11 hours we don't know yet but we can use the what's called the discover satellite and we'll go back to that on so on uh, excuse me um spaceweather.com one of the links are on our website and i'll show you that just to remind you most of you know how to do this but let's take a quick look now the links on our website and the column on the left at bpearthwatch.com or you can just come here to spaceweather.com itself we've always had it linked what they're saying now is the solar wind speed is at 558.1 slight decrease we're still well over a million miles per hour for, it was at 577 when we looked a minute ago what you would do is come right here you've got two satellites the ace and the discover click on discover i like it it has more detail it's going to bring you to this live chart and you can see right here in the solar wind speed we had that drop from right we were up in the 570s and the last register right there guys is going to put us at 559 right in that area still well over a million miles per hour can you imagine it? about 1.5 million miles per hour and the temperature still increasing but that's how you can tell if this proton storm that we're seeing now is bringing this solar wind speed up this high we really need to be careful on what the an impact of the CME will do but this is a very good indicator remember the discover satellite gives us about a 30 to 45 minute warning time on planet earth depending on the speed of the incoming solar wind and so when you start to see this rise it's only moments before we start seeing the impact on our magnetosphere and on our tectonic plates now let's take a look at the earthquake situation just for a moment this is one day it's all magnitudes in the u.s and we had that seven guys here they brought it down to a 6.9 but it came in as a seven in papua new guinea about 40 something kilometers 40.2 kilometers deep but this area has been hot notice alaska this is the top of the ring of the fire now these are not large quakes but they're swarming this is just today look at the west coast and so again guys west coast timing on this impact would be uh, about let's see one two three four five hours and you've already got quakes here now this is at most of this uh, san andreas fault and you've got a few that drift off into some of these other areas that we have watched right here but uh, again anytime we're dealing with a situation like this we never know exactly what's going to happen but we've seen it before so keep an eye on your quake situation the cme is going to be hitting the u.s broad daylight as well as south america as well as canada that's the side of the planet that's going to take this according to the model so if we split it in half just as an average we were looking at an impact on the west coast from the cme at 6 p.m now we're looking at it seven hours difference at 11 a.m so if you split that difference you would say what 230 on the west coast to put it in the middle you understand what i'm saying so just splitting the seven hour difference that would give you some type of indicator but what we need to know is this we have an incoming problem we need to pay attention to it more than likely you're going to see just like we're seeing from the proton storm now the radio blackouts we could see that you could see internet slow down telephone slow down and possible earthquake activity also when this energy feeds into the magnetic field surrounding our planet that feed into the north and south pole it heats magma one of the things that occurs but we're watching it guys just an update on the difference in the timing from the two different models heads up be safe